Hello and welcome to MCFC 9320 Group TV. Uh, I'm doing a little feature on ex City players to find out exactly, you know, what they're up to these days. Uh, did he still keep in touch with the club, etc.? And I was delighted to catch up with this man, ex City favourite, Uvonki Vonki. This is what Michelle had to say when I caught up with him a little bit earlier. Hello and welcome. I am absolutely delighted to have ex-City defender and, I must say, crowd favourite, Michelle Vonk. Michelle, thank you for joining us on your busy, busy day because I know you've got a match tonight. Yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm glad to be on and uh, nice to see you. Yeah. So what, what are you up to these days? Uh, currently, I'm uh, the manager of the under-23s of AZ Alkmaar. We play uh, with a young team. Uh, in the Championship of Holland. Uh, we play in uh, senior teams. Uh, our team is very young, the age of 17 till 23. Uh, no players above 23 are allowed to play in my team. But we play senior teams who are uh, 30 uh, and onwards and all, uh, like that. So it's a tough, tough competition for us, but it's a, a tremendous uh, education for the for the young boys. Yeah. So, Jordan, your time... I've, I've you, have you managed or, or coached any any players what have, have broke through to you know uh, to the, to the wide, wider international spectrum or gone on to ma uh, play overseas or you know bigger clubs within Holland? Bigger yeah, a lot of I've, I've been uh, managing uh, teams from two thousand and one uh, after I retired playing football. I've been, done several age groups. I've been starting uh, as a coach uh, as a manager in the under fourteens. And I've done every age group, uh, senior football in championship in Holland. I've been an assistant manager in the, in the Premier League. So there's a, quite a few players I've worked with over the years. Uh, most famous players for you to remember now is Henk Odegaard. I worked with him at uh, Herenveen uh, for a year and uh, he was on loan from uh, Real Madrid. Uh, he's now at Arsenal. So, uh, yeah, that was one of the, the good players I worked with. Yeah. So... Go, going on, going on to your city career. You joined us, if I'm not mistaken, in 1992. Yes. Um, a, a, one standout game for me, which you said off camera, was a, a way to a way to Oldham. It was, the, if I'm not mistaken, it was the last game of the season. We won five two. Uh, we, we had we had some we had some great great players, and you you was clearly one one of the, the crowd favourites. And I know you got, I think it was a, a bad ankle injury. In, in 1992, and you didn't get back into the team after we recovered, I think, the, the following January. Uh, yes. What was it like at that period after a new player coming in, you know, trying to establish yourself? Well, I came in uh, late in the season. I think uh, I just became for the, the transfer deadline that uh, was then about March 31st. Uh, so I joined just before that. I was on a loan for a, a week, uh, on trial, sorry, uh, for a week with City before I signed. Um, then I broke into the team quite uh, quick. Uh, I uh, partnered up with uh, Keith Curl, and uh, I played the rest of the season in the back uh, with him. And uh, yeah, it was quite uh, a change for me because at that time we played with a sweeper in Holland, a different system, and I, I had to adjust to the way of playing in England. They play with four in the back, so which everybody does now, but. England already did that, so that was a quite of a change. But uh, I broke into the team and I did well, and uh, it was uh, it was really really good to be there. Could could you could you feel that you, you became a, a firm favourite with the City fans because you you non nonsense defended? What was it like to play with Keith Curl? Because you know, because Keith Curl he just used to every opportunity he used to just leave you exposed, you know, with his little mazy runs up and you know the ooh curly yeah. really in. And then it developed to Uvonki Vonki, you know. Yeah. It, it was great days. What was it like to to play with some some of those players like Curl? Like I, I've I've jotted a few down here, like Walsh, Rosler, Blickcroft, Bigre. You like went on with David White. You know, there was some some uh, Tony Colton, You know, if, before he moved to United, yeah, we had a he was he, he was that was absolutely a fantastic time in 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 City's history, if you like. You know, it's, f forget what's going on now. That that was a team we was absolutely proud of, and could could you feel the affection from the city fans? Absolutely, everywhere I came and everywhere I went, uh, people recognised me. I didn't was used to that, so that was quite a change uh, that you be a, 
a familiar person in, in, in normal life. Uh, but uh, I enjoyed playing in that team with Keith Curl next to me. Uh, I met Terry Phelan, uh, the McMahon, uh, McMahon for, uh, Steve McMahon, and yeah. Fitzroy Simpson. We, we joined City uh, nearly the same time. Uh, we right. became yeah. good friends. I still have good contact with him. And uh, Tony Coden as a goalkeeper who was tremendous. He, uh, now Quinn. So uh, David White, who played on the wing, uh, I went with him to Sheffield United later on as well. So uh, That's right, yeah. yeah, it was a great team. Mike Sheeran, yeah. So you still keep in touch with a few of the, few of the lads? Yes, still do. Yeah, that's good. To, and also uh, the uh, the social uh, media is a good way to uh, communicate with all the players. So uh, that's good. Absolutely. Yeah, like City's changed unbelievably. You know, since since your time, since your time with us. Uh, yeah, is there a little bit of I wish I was playing now, or do you, is it is it tinged with a little bit of that, or is it like no, I had a great time there, and that was the time where I was I was meant to be. Well, I'm really chuffed for the fans that City is a major force in football nowadays, and uh, at the time I played at City, uh, we always were a bit behind Man United at the time. Uh, it was a big rivalry, but uh, financial, it was also a big gap. And that we uh, well, we overcome that now, and we are a major force in the w- football world. Uh, the way we're playing uh, at the moment with uh, with City uh, in the league, uh, I think they are uh, the, the number one team to go for the title and other and other competitions. But the uh, the time I played was also very nice to play, and I think with the fans, uh, it, it, it had. It had a lot of character. It was uh, nice to be in in the in, a plat- of a main road. Uh, training at Platt Lane, it had it had its charms. Yeah, it was really nice to do. I've I've still got a couple of pictures what I had taken with you at Platt Lane after 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 training, and I, I was trying I was trying to dig them out, but for the life of me, I cannot find them. They're, they're on some uh, SD card somewhere. Yeah, there th- was absolutely great days, and I, obviously, what I, what I loved about that, you know, you you've, you've not been at City for. God knows how many years, but you still say we. It, it's it's what's so special about City, where ex players still call you know say we we you know even in even in the media and stuff like that. We've seen it with more with like Micka Richard now on Sky Sports and stuff like that. He always refers to City as we. Well, I rec- uh, City is one of my big teams. Where I've played for uh, the best team in the best league. I uh, I came across. Uh, I've been to City a few times after. The last time I visited City was at uh, 2017 when they played Feyenoord in the Champions League. And I've been in 2015 to watch a game against Liverpool. So I've been on uh, several occasions, I've been to City and I, I've noticed and I've seen the change has been coming. And uh, obviously the team uh, I'm following every week and in, in the Champions League and in the Premier League. So they're doing really fa- very good. So it's nice to see. And I'm associated. I feel I still feel a blue because one of my young players, uh, he's a Man United player fan, and uh, no, 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 there's one team in England that's same. <laughs> that, that's that's that, that 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 is absolutely brilliant. He, he's only young. He's, he's got time to grow up and and grow out of all the United stuff. Uh, we have, we have to tell him soon enough, otherwise he, he, it'd be hard to, to change his mind. <laughs> yeah, just say you're not going to break through unless you're a blue. It's the same simple as that. Yeah, I've friended him on several occasions. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so when you've been over to City, is that, is that, have you ever been over as a, a City guest or anything like that? Or yeah. It, yeah. I've been to on the the fan stage uh, before the game, pr- prior uh, to the right, match. On the uh, City Live with uh, Natalie and Danny. Yeah, and I've been into the Tunnel Club when it was just opened. So, uh, yeah, uh, big changes to the to the club. I uh, came in '92, and now. It's a big difference, yeah. But I'm yeah. just for all the fans uh, how successful City is at the moment and uh, what, what we're looking at for the future. Uh, they are still playing in four competitions and, and 15 of 16 consecutive wins in the league is is, is quite an achievement and is uh, unbelievable. So, And the way of playing is, for everybody, very good to watch. Considering City was written off, you know, at, at the start of the season as, a, you know, it's, you know, what's happening... I even heard people say refer to Guardiola as a the the, the bald fraud, which I thought it was un, really really unfair considering his you know his managerial record. And what a lot of people seem to forget was we came straight out of the back of last season, 
no preseason or rest, and we just we just hit the, the Premier League season straight away. So, you know, other teams like Liverpool had a little bit of time to get the the red round that. And I think now thing I think the squ- the squad this season has been brilliant, considering you know we've we've lost De Bruyne for large periods, uh, Gabriel Jesus, and obviously Aguero. Aguero. So I, yeah. think, I think it's full credit to you know the work ethic, what what Pep's you know instilled into into the team. Yeah, that's, that's great to watch. Uh, off to uh, uh, for a not so good start now. It's uh, it's unbelievable what they achieve. But uh, I want to mention also for us here in Holland uh, the the COVID period uh, when we're not allowed to train properly and all the the bubble things you know you with your team the corona and the, and the infections. It had quite an impact on, on a lot of teams and a lot of clubs uh, building up to a season. And you can see many teams are struggling uh, or in the, in, the, in the beginning of the season with injuries and, and getting their form because everybody lacked competition for a long, long period uh, because of the COVID. Yeah, and it's not only that, you, as we're seeing over here, I think, unless I'm mistaken, even across Europe, there's more away victories because no fans have been there than... Any any time before, and that just shows you the, the you know the impact what fans do have on you know on a football match. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame now uh, the fans can't join uh, join the games because uh, exciting to watch City at the moment, and uh, also uh, all, all the games do, there are still coming. So uh, yeah, the prices too. What's, what's, be what's it like over there? Are, are you are you playing three matches a week like like we are over here? I don't. I, like play, players are clusters. The yeah, the athletes are on this amount of money. They should be able to play three matches a week. But the human beings at the end of the day, and I, I think the whole of the Premier League in particular, and some of the even some of the uh, like La Liga, etc. I think it's diluting the quality, the amount of play, you know, the amount of games per week. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love football as much as you know the next person, but you know you can see the dilution in 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 the quality with a with no fans and b the three games a week I think I think it's a little yeah. bit of a it's, it's, it's a bit too much and um, you also get a boost of, of fans uh, in the stadium uh, they can help you to overcome a little bit of fatigue and, and, and uh, inspiration but uh, three games a week is a big big thing uh, over here we played with the, all the, the teams in the Premier League we played about eight or nine games in one month and yeah, you can see the teams who are uh, who are the at the best the big the big squad like Ajax. They they came out on top. So all the other teams struggled with with uh, yeah putting up three three games a week with the same team is is a bit of a, a bit of a, a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So so in, in England we've we've uh, Boris Johnson's penciled in May the seventeenth when fans you know will be allowed back into well a certain amount of fans will be. Allowed back into the stadium, so hopefully that'll just be in time for uh, City lifting the, the the Premier League trophy. Yeah, well, over here we are testing uh, with small games with a, a small a number of, of uh, fans, uh, see how it, uh, what the effect is. So we are looking for uh, yeah maybe more in the future, but we have to wait what the effects are because uh, it's still going. And hopefully, yeah, by the end of the season, we can uh, we can all uh, go to a normal match and watch the games again. So that'd yeah, be nice. Because fi- financially, you know, it is crippling a lot of lot of clubs. You know, City are one of you know one of the probably yeah. a dozen clubs you know within within Europe really where you know they can afford to sustain you know the loss financially. But there's going to be so many you know so many clubs what you know will go under you know because of this. And it's just I, I just think that. You know the FA, uh, in, you know for, for England, should be you know supporting some of these clubs a little bit more because they, they will not they will not survive and it's a shame because that's where that's where the, the grass grassroots in particular that's where we, we get in all the, the little hidden gems. It's not just about going out and buying big name stars. No, no, we need them. We need them certainly. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, uh, it will end soon and. Uh, all the, the the teams who are in trouble uh, can manage to survive, and we can we can carry on as as we did before, and uh, that'd be nice. So uh, hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah. Now, have you any aspirations to manage over in 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 England? Yeah, it would, it would be nice for me to go over there and and be a manager of a team. That's uh, one of my dreams still. Yeah. So 
Well, we'd love to see. Or do, do you think more, say, English managers or up and coming managers, you know, need to go over overseas and get some experience? Because I, I think it's, it's it's almost everything's about the Premier League. The Premier League, you know, there's so many good leagues, you know, out there. I think it'd benefit a lot of English or British managers to go overseas and and get that experience because you don't really see that now, do you? Yeah, that, well, it's always good to, to change uh, leagues and, and, and change clubs to get some uh, different uh, views and different angles of uh, coaching and managing uh, with different cultures. So uh, that, that's obviously very good to do. Uh, the, the coming of foreign coaches to England uh, also uh, brought some other uh, football too, uh, like Pep Guardiola did with City. So it's good to see. No, ab- absolutely. And that, that's been one big plus because... Even now with the likes of Pep, you know, since Pep came over to Sydney, you, you find every team now in, in pretty much every, every league, they, they're playing from the goalkeeper out now, rather it used to be, let's take a goal kick and it used to be up to big Nile Quinn, uh, you know, for yeah. it to out, where the only time we seem to play the long ball now is Edison, who's basically a midfielder, whacking the ball on, but it, it's pinpoint rather than hitting over, you know, to the likes of Enaguero or whoever's playing up front for us, you know. It's the goalkeeper is is like a central central half now. <laughs> it, it, abs- absolutely. So, what's what's your hopes and uh, for the rest of the season? Not not just for City, but for, for yourselves. How, how are you how are you doing in the league? Well, we have a very young team playing in a in a mature senior le- league. So we are not in the top half. We're in the bottom half. But it's also about experience and educating my players to professional football at a senior level. Um, I'm helping these boys to make the final step to first team football uh, in the Premier League because AZ is currently number three in, in Holland and uh, challenging for number two spot with uh, with PSV Eindhoven and Ajax. Ajax is the number one, but we are in contention of becoming number two and, and uh, securing Champions League uh, football, hopefully. Uh, so it's a big gap from my team to the first team and uh, a lot of things in between need to be well be, be taught and be learned in, in, in our league so uh, it's a tough competition but it's good to do Is there anybody we should look out for? Any any rising stars? Any any names who you think that lad is going to make it? Well he's very young but he's only 18 and uh, he has a not broken into the first team finally yet, but he makes some minutes. So there's a lot of youngsters who are in my team who can who can make the final step, and already did some before them. So uh, and we have a good uh, and good that'd academy, be, and and that would be a success that for you in in you know in the in the manager's role, you know where you can develop these players. So that's got to be just a, a bigger buzz for you. It'd be bittersweet. I, sh- I should imagine your goal is. You know, I want, I want to make these players go have huge futures and that must take a certain amount of pride for you as well. Yeah, our academy is a, is a main uh, a bloodline for the first team in football for our club. Uh, currently, they're playing about seven or eight players who came from through the academy and are uh, looking to make the next step for big money. So, uh, yeah, we've, we're preparing very good with the, with the academy and uh, we have also brought some good players already on. So, uh, they are playing all over the place. So, well, Michelle, I cannot thank you enough. You know, taking you know a little bit of time out to, to come and catch up with the city fans. I know once once this goes out, you know it'll be very it'll be you know received very well because we we love catching up with well basically yeah. one of our own. And as they say, once a blue, always a blue. And it's good to see that you know you are still referred to us uh, as us. You know we and that just shows yeah. you what you know what city have had on you. Absolute pleasure to do, and uh, hopefully we uh, we can celebrate at the end of the season with all together that we uh, we won some titles. So uh, fingers crossed, all the best, and uh, thank you for uh, for asking me. Thank you very much, Michelle. It's been an absolute okay. pleasure. Bye bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. So there you go. That's the thoughts of ex City favourite Michelle Vonk. and as you can see there, what an absolute diamond of, of a man he is, and still has huge affection for City. So, yeah, follow, follow his, his progress, you know, keep in touch with these ex-players because it's part of our history. So, once again, I would like to thank Michelle for taking the time out uh, and I wish him the best for, for the future. Thank you, Michelle. Bye-bye.